It's that time. It's the Tuesday evening edition of the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. On this very May-like day, we had a high of 75 this afternoon. Then we had some springtime thunderstorms in parts of the area. You know, it's that time of the year that we can see just about anything from the atmosphere. The atmosphere can throw all sorts of things at us in early March. We can have thunderstorms. We can have near record heat. We can have rain. We can have snow at this time of the year. And of course, we can still have cold in early March as well. And it was on this date five years ago that the high was just 17, our coldest high temperature on record for today's date. We also had a pretty healthy snowpack on this date back in 2019. And you know, that Days like this, definitely the exception in recent winters. That winter of 1819 was not particularly cold at all, but we did have a pretty cold little stretch here in early March, five years ago. It was not snow, but it was rain that moved through the area this afternoon. And as we oftentimes see in these spring and summer thunderstorm situations, uh, your mileage can vary a little bit on the rainfall totals. Although we're not seeing a big variance here. Generally on average, I would say about a quarter of an inch as an average, some places a little higher, some places a little lower. And we had some hailstones here and there, some small ones. We had some vivid rainbows late this afternoon, early this evening. Thanks to everyone who has been sharing rainbow pictures on social media and our email address, weatherpics, P-I-C-S, at WFMJ.com. We also had some pretty cool looking clouds out there earlier on today. And while we did not have anything too exciting here locally, I did want to share real quickly um, what happened in western Ohio. This uh, system that moved through uh, western Ohio was not expected to produce uh, you know, a lot of uh, severe weather or anything like that, but uh, there was a, an EF0 land spout type tornado. What is that? What is a land spout? Well, it's basically like a water spout. It's basically a tornado that forms uh, due to rotation in the very, very bottom of the atmosphere. There's not even rotation up in the clouds. Usually a tornado forms from a, what we call a mesocyclone rotation at the cloud level. But a land spout can occur when you don't even have rotation up there. It's just in the lowest couple hundred feet maybe of the atmosphere and get a little spin up. And usually these don't get very strong, but this one actually looks pretty strong. Uh, one of our colleagues, Chris Vickers, a meteorologist over in Toledo, shared this video. Uh, this is from Putnam County, Ohio, a couple of counties in from the Indiana state line, and it was confirmed by the National Weather Service this afternoon that this was, in fact, an EF0 land spout tornado with winds of 70 miles per hour. Leipzig, I believe, is how you pronounce the uh, town that this was uh, near. And, of course, it didn't last very long, but it did do some damage to some structures around the uh, some of the rural areas there in western Ohio. Nothing like that around here, although we did have a couple of cool clouds. I, I saw pictures of almost looked like a wall cloud, and, and then we had a couple of uh, other interesting looking formations, but of course no rotation and uh, nothing more than pea-sized hail and some vivid lightning for a time earlier on today. Might see one more clap of thunder as this complex rolls through uh, this evening, but that should be about it for lightning and thunder for tonight. A couple of showers over the next handful of hours. All right, our cold front is on the uh, march. Now we have rain cooled air overhead, but it's still warmer here, of course, than it is toward north and west. We have 41 right now in Lansing. Out towards Green Bay, it's 39. That cool front will slide in. Won't make it too far south and east of our viewing area, but just far enough south and east that temperatures will basically go nowhere tomorrow. But with the temperature regime we've had lately, of course, it's no surprise that the leaf out is way ahead of schedule across the region. Yeah, we're two, three weeks or so ahead of schedule in terms of buds starting to appear on certain things. We've got crocuses trying to come up out of the ground. It's only March the 5th. These are things that more typically happen in the second half of March. But of course, uh, February was one of the warmest on record, and so far it's been warm in early March. All right, as far as uh, the rest of tonight, a couple of showers this evening. Now, as we head towards tomorrow morning and everybody gets up to uh, go to work and school, Boy, it's going to be a clunker tomorrow because not only is the cool front pressing in, low pressure to our south is going to spew some moisture northward, and it's going to kind of get wrung out by that nearby frontal boundary, resulting in just a light rain and cool temperatures throughout our Wednesday. Uh, notice the temperatures tomorrow morning at daybreak, uh, close to 50. Notice what the temperatures are for the rest of the day. Yeah, pretty close to 50. We might, you know, rise a few degrees down towards East Liverpool for a time, Elwood City, places like that. But the farther north and west you are in our area, you know, you might even see temperatures dropping for most of the day up towards Southington and Bloomfield and Mesopotamia, places like that. But on average, we just kind of hang out around 50 for much of the day. There's our front sagging slowly south and east. Now, this light rain is with us for most of the daylight hours. 
uh, departing early in the evening, Wednesday evening, and then clouds should break for plenty of sunshine Thursday. And actually, Thursday afternoon looks good. We'll be back in the upper 50s, and Friday also looks pretty ne decent as well. I think most of this rain is going to hold off until very late Friday, towards sunset Friday evening, although Friday night and Saturday should be pretty soggy. In fact, this is a pretty active pattern across the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic states. Now, it's been pretty dry over the last several months out here in the Midwest. Not as much in our area, but out here in Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, places like that, they really do need the rain. So this is pretty good news for them. We don't need the rain as badly around here, but as we start you know, talking more and more about the upcoming spring and growing season, uh, we're not in a drought here locally, but the lowest, or the top, I should say, meter or so, the top layer of our soil is kind of dry. So uh, this rain will certainly help us out some. I think, uh, you know, on average over the next seven days, we're going to see at least an inch worth of rain, maybe up to two inches in some spots. But, you know, that's pretty good drink of water over the course of seven days here in mid-March. All right, it is uh, the fifth day of the month, and that means we get an update on some long-range modeling uh, from the European Center. And so uh, let's take a look at that. What we're going to look at first is the uh, kind of decay of El Nino and the return of La Nina later this year. Keep an eye on the ocean water temperatures here in the equatorial Pacific. All the oranges give way to blues in that key stripe right here. So this is La Nina coming on. And uh, what we're looking at here is midsummer. Our weather, you know, I touched on this some last week when I kind of did the spring forecast. I believe it was Friday evening. Um, our, the tenor of our late spring and summer weather may largely depend on how fast La Nina comes on, how strong it comes on as well. A stronger La Nina that comes on faster introduces drier risks for us in the summer, probably some hotter risks as well. A slower evolution of La Nina, maybe it waits until very late summer or fall before it really kicks in in earnest, that would mean less of a chance of a hot, dry summer in our area. But yeah, it looks like La Nina is coming. It's just a matter of how strong and when. Here's a look at the uh, temperature anomalies off that same kind of suite of modeling. Uh, this comes out once a month from the European Center. We can look all the way through next winter if we want. We're not going to speculate that much. Here's a look at the springtime temperatures compared to average. The modeling is indicating a warmer than average spring across a lot of the Great Lakes in the Northeast. I think this is largely influenced by the first half of March. It's going to be so warm during the first half of March. It's really going to you know, kind of uh, impact a lot the final numbers. I don't think April is nearly this warm. I have my suspicions that May is not that warm either. What about the summer season? Let's fast forward to meteorological summer, June, July, and August. What I'll actually do is compare this run to the previous run. Let's see if I can see if you can see this. Yeah. So this is the current run. This is last month's run. Uh, whoops. Let's. Uh, that's actually not for the same time period. So let's get the same time period loaded up. There we go. All right, so let's try that again. This is this month's uh, run for the summer. This is last month's run for the summer season. There's not a big change here. It's possible the model is trying to paint more heat uh, compared to last month for the summer season out across the Corn Belt, um, but not much of a change in its depiction of things around here. The European is fairly slow. Uh, in terms of its evolution of La Nina um, compared to some of the other modeling. Now, it may be right, but it is on the slower end of the spectrum as far as the evolution of La Nina, and therefore the, the European is not exactly depicting a real hot summer around here. Hot, yes. Hotter than last year, but nothing excessive uh, because of the slow onset of La Nina. That may be the right idea. It may not be. I don't have a strong feeling on it at this point, but just know that it is a little bit, just a little bit of an outlier at this point. All right, thanks for sticking with me on this Tuesday evening. I'll uh, have more updates on social media throughout the evening. 21 News, the 11 tonight, anytime on the Storm Tracker 21 app. Make sure you follow me on all the social medias, and I'll see you right back here on Wednesday for the freshest edition of Weather for Weather Geeks.